Uh, good evening, everyone. I want to call the meeting of Community Board 17's Land Use Committee uh, to order. Uh, greetings to everyone. I hope that you had uh, uh, some some decent or some. We've been having some decent weather since the last time we got together, and uh, you know, hope everyone's in good health. Uh, as we wait for the room to get populated, I'm going to pass over the meeting minutes at this time because we're not at quorum currently. We're not a quarter. We're not a quorum currently, and I'm going to move into the chairperson's report. Um, uh, actively, we don't have any submissions for um, the landmark application. You know, a few months ago, I uh, shared that uh, there were some pending applications, but we haven't received any um, formal notices for any, you know, presentations. So we're looking out for that. Uh, with the help of Ms. Frazier, I was actually able to confirm. That we've that our letter that we crafted is actually in the possession of someone in Dolly Mealy's office in regards to the 98th Street development. We had that acknowledgement this week. Um, as you know, I may have pressed a bit at the last meeting out of a little bit of agitation, but a little uh, aggression goes a long way. Um, I, and I haven't received any communication from Jay, from Jay Goldstein's and his team regarding that project, but we're still trying to make sure we have all our ducks in a row before. Uh, the pending, you know, application should you pursue that. Um, last Saturday, I attended a town hall meeting on the 28th, co-hosted by uh, Community Board 9's chair, Ms. Newman, and our own uh, Community Board 17 Housing and Land Use Committee member, uh, Ms. Fields, because I'm not sure she's in tonight. But I see you, Ms. Fields. Good day. Um, uh, very interesting. Uh, all events are all encompassing of what a town hall should be. Very uh, vocal. Um, I wish we had a little bit more representation there uh, to speak on our issues more clearly, um, which leads me into what the discussion on that topic is, is more or less as a committee and as a board, I think that we need to work on our messaging. Um, there were some, some comments made about our pursuit, about how we're pursuing to get, uh, you know, our rezoning effort. And it seems to be some confusion about what we're trying to actually accomplish. Um, you would think that our neighboring community boards would be more informed of what we're trying to do, um, but it's definitely a skewed and we have to do better with trying to make sure that our messaging of what we're trying to do is out there clear because should we need their support, we want them to support us. And um, it didn't really sound like we would have their support moving forward with the rezoning because of some misconceptions. Um, that failure may fall on us as a board for not having the messaging clear out there. So everybody not just this committee has to do better with getting our messaging out there in a more tranquil way so there's no misunderstandings um tonight we're gonna have nhs um i'm not sure if they're in but they'll be here eventually they're gonna speak on our um estate planning event that we're trying to host in the spring um they may have the resources to help us facilitate and execute on that so uh, they're invited here tonight to speak further on how they can aid us. Um, I did get a communication from Chair James regarding a landmarking event. I know some people came late. I'll repost it in the chat. There's a free landmarking event. Um, some of us are familiar with the process. Some new members aren't. It's informative. And I want to say it was February 8th, but I'll put the landmarking event in there. I think something that everyone should attend. Um, sometimes there's never... You know, you're never too informed to learn something new. And for our newer members, understanding that as a mechanism to try to combat what's going on in our community is imperative. Um, though it has its challenges, and uh, we experienced that. Well, we, I'm sorry, trying to read the chats. We experienced that with our um, two applications that we processed last year. Uh, but, you know, with all, with all good, there's always a little bit of challenges and lastly um this week i was contacted from daryl hollins um he shared a youtube link with me which basically confirmed that the 5381 king's highway project application was actually certified this afternoon at three o'clock um i got a email from miss frazier our district manager and 
we've been formally notified that uh, they're moving forward with the Yerlip application. Now, to make sure that we understand the process, because it is a new process and there are some things that are in there from old, but there are timestamps and dates. Um, I'm just gonna read the process. This would all be shared with everybody here eventually, along with the pertinent application details, but we have to understand what our role is in the process and make sure that we execute the process to make sure that we're acknowledged and it's received properly. All right. Um, I'm going to read it. it. Came in the email form. Upon receipt of the notice of certification, the community board has 60 days within which to complete its responsibilities in the yearlook process. A notice of community slash borough board public hearing form and a community board slash borough recommendation form will be included with the notice of certification. The following steps must be taken to accomplish the board's responsibilities by the deadline indicated on the notice of certification. The six steps. Number one, notify the land use committee chairperson of the pending yearly matter. Arrange the, arrange the committee chair, excuse me, arrange with the committee chair a date and time for a meeting with the committee. Send notices to the land use committee members, the applicant, and interested parties within the vicinity of the property, which we know is our Whitty Lane residence. Um, number two, prepare and email the notice of community board public hearing to the city record slash official journal of the city of New York for publishing in their calendar. This must be done, but this must be done at least two weeks before the board is scheduled to vote on the application. Timestamps, right? Deadlines, timestamps, and we have to actually have a meeting um, with the applicant prior and our 60 days starts. I want to say since we were officially notified today, it starts today. Number three, the public hearing must be completed within a 60 day period. Therefore, a hearing date would be on the date of the regularly scheduled monthly board meeting falling within the required 60 day deadline. That means that, um, you know, the March date would be imperative for board members to be present because they're actually voting on an item that we need to progress and move forward. Right. Number four, notify all parties of the date and time and place of the board's public hearing as placed on the board agenda. Number five is immediately following the public hearing, prepare a letter outlining the community board's recommendations, including any modifications or restrictions, the final voting tally, and mail to the city planning commission, mail the form to the applicant and to the borough president, and retain a copy for the board's files. And number six is the city planning commission will be notified of the board's results, will notify the board of the results of the application at some point. Um, I'm gonna conclude the report and open up the floor for questions, if any, on what was discussed. Ms. Viglianti. Hi, yes, um, I would think that the date would be the date on the application, not the day that we were informed. We're informed today, but we don't. What's the date on the application? Because that's the date we have to go by, I would think. Correct. Um, not from my understanding from Ms. Frazier. That's not how what the process is. 60 days it's, after receipt. Yeah, it says 60 days after the notice of certification. Upon receipt. It says upon <laughs> receipt of the notice of certification, the community board has 60 days. What's the date of certification? Well, yeah, okay. That's a little bit arbitrary, though. So. Well, the notice of certification is what we received today. Okay, we were we notified. Officially received it. Okay. That's correct. And there's a date on that. So, okay. Yeah. Their application was in probably before they came mm -hmm. to speak to us, but they actually got it certified on Thursday, I believe. And we received the notice today. Oh, no, okay. on Tuesday. Excuse me, on Tuesday. Okay, so it's not from the it's not from the date of certification. It's from the date that we get the notice. No, I'm going to say which we'll all get a copy from this of this from from yeah. the process. It says upon receipt of the notice of certification, which was today. Okay. So, that, so this is an instance where the timing works in our favor, right? It actually yeah. happened on a date of the meeting, and we're able to coordinate and do the things properly to make sure that we check all of the boxes and have an official notice before. It may not be this upcoming meeting, but it has to be before the March meeting or at the March meeting. We would need to have the vote there. So it gives us one meeting 
um, to make sure that we inform all of the members how important it is to be at the March meeting. meeting. And I think that most likely will dedicate our next land use meeting um, to this mem to this applicant to make sure that we have everyone here because I believe it's on everyone's schedule. Um, and to make sure that all of the questions from us and the Whitty Lane residents gets acknowledged. Um, Ms. Bennett. Ah uh, yes, my question is in regard to that time and certification and the process that you said we have to have a meeting, we have to notify, we have to post everything. Mm -hmm. You know, that ASAP. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you wait till March with some of these people, you can forget it. We're not waiting till March. There's a process no, that we need to follow. ASAP and see if you can get it together by the end of this month. Because if not, March people disappear. It's right before Easter. They know this. All right. I'll review it with Ms. Frazier. I get what you're saying. Oh, yeah, because they but, know that people will be going away. They will not be around for that vote. But if we dilly die on this, we lose it. Because the people have already spoken, they don't want it. It's going to disturb that water table, and they don't care. But I think the idea is to destroy those houses up in there with your Because that's what it's going to do. It's going to look like the other side of Clarity Road with the Rocky Road houses with the water under it. Same problem. Excuse me? Oh, when she's finished. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, Ms. Bennett. Who's speaking? Hi, this is this is Ms. Frazier. Um, right. We only received this application at 3 p.m. It's a little premature for us to start having conversations until we've reviewed it, both yourself, myself, and the chair of the board. If we mm -hmm. have to call a special meeting, if that's required, we will make that decision. We want the good. residents to know that we want. I'm, I'm in two meetings. I'll call you back. I'm in two yeah. meetings. I mm. want the residents to know that. Um, I'll call you back, um, Vashti. I want the residents to know that uh, we're not taking this lightly. Mm -hmm. It's very important. So, and we don't want to. Um, uh, we, this is very important, not only to the residents, but to the community board. So mm -hmm. we just received this today. And that is why I said to Mr. Frey, um, let's communicate, have a conversation with the chair of the board. If we have mm -hmm. to set aside a day for a specific, for a public hearing, uh, I think the board will move forward and do that. So it's a little mm -hmm. premature for us to start getting into conversations about how we're going to move forward. Let, let's have a conversation with the executive body. The chair mm -hmm. knows this is important. Um, we all know it's important to the community. And believe you me, um, this is not our first Euler process. We've done this mm -hmm. in the past. I understand the procedures and the policies, and we're going to move forward expeditiously to ensure mm -hmm. that the board have an opportunity to vote, on, that the community have a voice, and the board have an opportunity to vote. Okay, so thank you. I just want to get the, get it done before a lot of people go away for for holiday. You understand? Well, it has to be done within sixty days, so we're now waiting for to July. There's a right. frame uh -huh. that we must get it done. I don't want to wait. I don't think it'll wait till the last minute. Let's get it. Let's get it ready. Get, let let the members understand, like you said, how important this is. Well, this is why we have the. That's why the timing is on our side. Us getting mm -hmm. notified today couldn't have been a better time frame. You know, it's our meeting today. I'm notifying you so we can mm -hmm. do the process. The process yeah. has to go through. There's no skipping steps in the process. Everyone mm -hmm. needs to, you know, the applicant needs the formal in invitation to come and represent to us what they're trying mm -hmm. to do in that property. Everything that was done before needs to be done to again, but now yeah. we have to fall into the process. And there's no skipping yeah. steps of the process. Every box needs to be checked. And every opportunity that needs to be afforded to whatever individual or team it is needs to be done. Right? Mm -hmm. And we can't yeah. pre vote on something that hasn't been presented to us. No, no, no. I'm just saying get the people together. This is where we do have to have the vote. We have the members and we have the, the people there to do it. Because, like I said, sometimes people go in. Yeah, and I understand that. But 
Can't just be that anyone can make yeah. it. Just better they have to come back before us. They have to come back yeah. before the, the, the land use and the general board. So this will be done. <laughs> just give us some time. We just got the notice today. We will yeah. follow all procedures to ensure that the community have a voice. Listen, I'm praying. I'm praying for those people. Thank you, Ms. Bennett. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other questions? Oh, okay. Hi, hello, uh, this is just a suggestion. Hello, my name is Jennifer John. Um, basically, what I was thinking, listening to the conversation, this is just my second meeting, is maybe you can make like a timeline of when everything has to be done and, and printed out. So a tentative date when you expect everyone to be there or. I'm, I'm, you know. oh, oh, yeah, let me clarify that. The timeline is our next meeting, right? Okay. The, the next land use meeting. 30 days from today gives me the opportunity mm -hmm. to speak to the executive committee because our meeting is in the beginning of the month, right? My mm -hmm. executive meeting is on Monday. That gives me the mm -hmm. opportunity to inform them, some of which mm -hmm. are on the call. So, you know, four of them are informed already, <laughs> right? But I have to inform okay. you 10 or so. And then we mm -hmm. actually have a general board meeting, which we could make that message abundantly clear. Should we fail mm -hmm. to get quorum in that meeting? It will be have to the messaging, like I spoke about earlier, needs to be mm -hmm. clear that the importance of being at the March meeting yeah. is to vote on this matter, right? Yeah. And, and and trying to rush that, I think that mm -hmm. will fail in trying to get what we're trying to get out of it, right? Like okay. right now, mm -hmm. I can't assume that everyone will be ready for the February fifteenth meeting to vote on this particular matter with no notice, mm -hmm. right? And in that mm -hmm. time. We would have to have the applicant in front of us, right? We would have to have the mm -hmm. concession or the collective idea of what the land use committee is. However, we may assume it may be, we do need to vote post them giving us an actual presentation, present that to the executive committee, then to the general board for an official mm -hmm. vote. And that can't be done out of sequence. You, you know? also have to yeah. post it in the city yeah. record. Exactly. <laughs> so, which would need to be posted. Yesterday. Yeah, yeah, which we're already too late to do. So that's why I try to go over the process just so that you know mm -hmm. that there are timed intervals that need to happen and it's for fairness. Everything is for fairness. Yeah. For them, but in our favor, we've seen this piece mm -hmm. already. Right? Oh great. Mm -hmm. Now it may have been modified. I don't know if you were aware that we've actually seen this presentation. Um, I think it was in November. Um, should okay. it be modified in some ways? It won't be a lot of the committee members seeing this for the first time, you know, so we'll mm -hmm. they're informed about it, but they'll get that official docket binded. And, you know, this is, this is the process we're, we're talking about the process and we can't skip the process. Yeah, right. okay. Thank right. you. Thank you. Ms. Bennett, your hands raised. Yeah, that is not the exact, you said 60 days from time of, so it was Tuesday you received it, correct? We didn't receive it Tuesday, we received it today. Today, okay, okay. Today. Because I'm checking that on that 60 days, so I'm going to do a yeah. countdown. Yep. We received the notice of certification today. Mm, okay. In the chat. The timeline is a little off. Okay, are there any other questions on the matter? Seeing no, oh, Ms. Robinson. Who gets to finally vote on this issue? The board, do they have the final say? The board has the final say. So all the work that we're doing and recommending to the board, say we're not for this project, does that have any type of um, sway to the board? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, the board historically has gone with the recommendation of its committees, you know? 
Um, it's impossible for them to be familiar with the, every detail of the situation. That's what our duties are. Um, so historically, I'm hoping that they would make themselves available to be at the applicants meeting if they're going to vote on something so, um, you know, colossal. I don't think that they would want to be on the sidelines for that. That's my hope. But um, I would think that they would vote in favor or with the recommendation of the committee that's um, supporting that or not supporting a particular topic. Okay. Mr. Fair, I have one more question. Oh, Ms. Bennett. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, cool. good. I'm glad you can hear me. No, after the 30 days and after that vote in March, how much time do we have after that? After the vote? After the vote, you have to generate the letter with the suggested suggestions or the amendments and just submit mm -hmm. it to the three parties before that mm -hmm. day period. So after the March meeting, we have two weeks. We got a little bit of time. That's it. Gotta well, make sure that's out. Yeah, we have two weeks. I would say we have two weeks to get the formal letter and the notices out to the office, um, to the, to the members of record. Everyone that needs to be um, addressed. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sword. Hi. Uh, could you hear me, Mr. Chair? I can. Great. Uh, I, I wanted to make uh, two comments, if I can. Uh, the, the first was was towards the um, the ULERP that I guess you're discussing. Was that for the uh, the storage space that they? Yes, uh, okay. So I, I wanted to. I can just share the experience that I had back in like 2015, 2016, where there was like a ULERP action with the the mayor's uh, mayor De Blasio ZQA, and and that was when uh, Miss Miss Bennett, I remember Miss Adele Bennett was on uh, land use back then too. So one of the dangers is that when this goes to the uh, committee, uh, to the uh, CB17 land use committee, and then to the whole, uh, um, you know, to to the to the whole board to vote. It, it seems like that the whole board is probably going to vote it down uh, with the sentiment. But one of the dangers is that when it goes to the city council, the city council can play a sort of game. It's the same game that they played on how they passed the zoning and back in 2015. After all, the community board said they don't want it. So the way that the game is, is that you guys can say no, you know, support the will of the community. It goes to the city council. Uh, for you know the, the ULERP, and then the city council, they could change it a little bit. They can make a little bit of a modification, and that's how. If you know the way that the city council works is they follow the local member. So if this is is this Darlene Mealy, I don't know if she's the city council. Whoever the city council person is in that area, that's the person who they're all going to follow. So what happens is is if you guys pass it, and it goes to the city council, there's a possibility that they can play a game. Where they make a little bit of a change at the city council, they send it to the city planning commission. The city planning commission makes a little bit of a change or something like that. And then the city council can vote on something in which the city council could pass it, even though you guys said we're against it. So what happens is, is if you know, just to for people to watch it, even though this even though the, the, the local community board says no. Uh, when it goes to the city council, there's a way where they can actually make a modification and say, oh, we're going to we're going to change it a little bit. Now we voted upon something different and then they could pass it. And it's 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 a real kind of complicated thing that there's really not anything on. But that's how de Blasio passed the whole ZQA because every every community board said we don't want it. And they made a little bit of a change and then they said we're voting on something different. And technically, they're supposed to actually, when there's a change, they're supposed to give notice to the community boards so that the community boards can schedule like an emergency meeting. And back 2015, that's exactly what happens where, you know, anyhow, I don't, I don't want to go too much into a complicated issue. I just wanted to present it that even if you guys say no, they could play a game in terms of changing it a little bit, and it has to be really watched so that it comes back if there's any changes, because that's how it's you know, just to, just to make that, just to make that point, um, I, I, I want to. Just, oh, you had a second point. Yeah, the second point is, is you know, I, I would just ask if if there could be some attention to what's going on uh, in uh, northeast East Flatbush. Well, Mr. Sword. Yeah. This is in regards to this. 
If you want to hang on. Let me hold off on that. Okay. Let me hold off. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to hang on to new business or you got it. Like that just so we could try to progress. Okay. I understand where you're going with it, but gotcha. Good you know, point. Try to make okay. sure that we don't Absolutely. conjoin two things. All right. Here. Miss Bennett. Yeah, I was going to say, I was there in 15. I was part of the Europe committee and they did do it. They altered it just enough to change it. But it wasn't the same thing. Then they lied to us. This is what they do. But you got to sit on the city council. We have to sit on these members to hold them, as they say, hold their feet to the fire to make sure they don't go against us. Well, we have a whole block of residents, residents that don't want to have this done in their neighborhood. I'm pretty sure that we're not the ones that are going to hold their feet to the fire. This is the process. We have to follow it and yep. we're going to follow that process and we're going to have our recommendation there. You know, mm -hmm. having someone else's, all we could do is make our voices heard by okay. the effective council member is and then hold them accountable should they not go in our direction. Okay. That's what I mean, if I hold them accountable because if they vote against us, then we vote them out. Okay. And I'm with that, but we have to, we can, we can ask, we can acquire. Yes, but they make, we make sure they do it, uphold what they're supposed to do Correct. for us. That's it. So it is something that we have to pay attention to. And I believe we have somebody's keeping me fully apprised. And that's Mr. Holland. Your hand is raised. Oh yeah. Where is he? Yeah, I'm right here. But you know, oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, there you go. Just to relate to the, the gentleman's question. Um, I just don't like the word game. I think that's not a, that's a that's a poor use of a word because this is not a game. This is something that's serious, that's going to affect the community because self storage is something that's that's a downside for the community. It has no benefit. Number two, I've been in close contact with the city council's office. I've spoke to her community liaison, um, Sabrina, Dejuste, mm -hmm. and I've been in contact with the gentleman supposed to be here tonight, Mr. Herrera, to report back to them about it. I've sent them emails. I had a meeting with Sabrina Dejeste in December. I sent her an email and spoke to her this month. They are very much aware of our concern and they, they want to hear our concerns. And the feeling that I got from Mr. Dejeste is that the, uh, the city council person is really, will, will really consider what we want to do. She didn't say that she's going to, to vote with us, but she's really want to consent to what to do. So. As far as the city council as a whole playing a game, that's one thing. I just don't like the word game. This is not a game. But as far as our city council person um, being informed, their office is very well informed. They're in touch with me and I'm in touch with them. And we're eventually going to get them on board and hopefully get them to support our position on the special permit. Thank don't you. forget that you're in touch with me too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Don't leave Mr. me out of that, Mr. Uh, Afray. I keep you in the loop uh, on, with every move that I make. You know that. Yeah, right. Appreciate it, uh, Mr. Lewis. Yeah, so good night. Good night, everyone. Um, I just want us to 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 be very aware that even though we 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 will make. And, and and we will make um, our statement. As was said before, and as we said in the last meeting, you know, we need to be able to speak to the owner in a way that to a point, to a point that we not come off too combative or too, or too how I could say this, um or to um uh, conflicting or conflictive in a way because again the owner owns that property so now mr holland has made some you know um maybe some suggestions and we could make uh, a suggestion and and tell the owner again how this will affect and how this will do this. But we have to be mindful of that. Plus two, we have to be mindful how we deal with our council people also, right? Yes, they do work for us. At the same time, we can't say they're not doing anything for us and expect them to do something for us. 
right? And I think that's sometimes some of the the, 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 the the misnomer or some of the thing that we get frustrated because we don't understand how to deal with the politicians in the right way. The folks that get to deal with the politicians correctly, what they do? They go to the dinner dances, they go to their events, they pay into their campaigns. We haven't learned that. So sometimes when you don't have a dog in the fight, right? Or you haven't put your, you haven't put a, 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 a monetary interest in the council person um, thing, you haven't shown that. They might look at your plight, they might look at your plea and say, well, yes, maybe it's a bad thing, but there has to be a mutual um, incentive for both. And this is what something that we have to learn. And sometimes we have to remember that when certain things are going on in our communities from before, when we see other areas in our communities that are thing, we can't choose our fight only when it hits our doorstep. We have to be able to fight all the time and consistently. Not when it come down by you, and then when it gone from you, well, you say, well, nobody helped me, so forget it. We have to be consistent in what we are doing. And we have to learn how to maneuver in the political manner. That's why you have all these um, acts and all these different things, right? Because the people who invest in those things have the air of the politicians. And it's something that I don't think our community has really learned how to do effectively enough to really push our agenda as we would like it to be pushed. Oh, thank you, Mr. Lewis. Um, and to add on to that, um, those of you who's been inside of the WhatsApp chat, you know, we've been monitoring some situations around us and we've seen how that played out. Um, everything around us is a learning experience. Um, we're speaking on uh, what was happening in Harlem. There's just been a back and forth dialogue conversation. Um, anybody who would like to join that, of course, the link is in the chat. Um, but we do speak on these topics. We, we need to speak on that. We need to speak on the 421 tax abatement that was brought up at the housing meeting, how that expired and um, how that moves forward and how that affects us um, should they, you know, renew it, you know? And it kind of speaks to the aggressive building that was happening in the latter of the last two years because they were trying to get some things done before that deadline was crossed. Um, we need to keep the conversation going. Um, not just here in the chats, via texts, via information. You know, we have the quality of life thing that's happening um, this month. Miss Frazier is going to be working on that. I think Miss uh, Miss Kwashi, I got that right, <laughs> for giving me some images. I've gotten some other quality of life emails that we're all going to forward to Miss Frazier so we can compile that for the mayoral visit uh, later on this month. All right. In closing, this topic. Um, we have uh, to pay attention to what's going on. You know, we have to pay attention. And this is actually our first um, application on, in my tenure. So we make sure that we do our part and we do our part effectively. And that there's no um, objections to how we handle this process and we, and we do our part clean, then we have to be present. You know, when they go for the application, you need to be present. And if you have the obligation or the ability to hit, have your voice heard, then you need to be present as well. Um, so, Mr. Johnson, I see you in the chat. I know that you're a Whitty Lane resident. Um, you will be formally um, notified, but I'd like you to take this opportunity to notify your neighbors of what's happening now. All right. Um, thank you. No other questions, Mr. Lewis, your answer? All right, good. So now we're gonna move on to the approval of the meeting minutes. Everyone has the meeting minutes or have received the meeting minutes. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the meeting minutes for January 5th, 2023? Anybody? 
I make a motion to approve the minutes, Marguerite. The maritime is seconds the motion. Motion has been moved and properly seconded. Uh, we're open up for discussion. Is there any discussion, amendments, changes that need to be made to the meeting minutes as they are? There are none. I see you. This, this, this one, I, I was trying to find, raise my hand. I think okay. it's just on page five, where it says three quarters of a peninsula site type sip. It's supposed to be strip. I think it's on page five. The word sip should be changed to strip. That's all. I think it's on page five. I'm not, I don't have it open right now. Um, all right, if you could just, uh, you know, get me that. I mean, you said it on Okay, I'll, want, me, want me to send you that in, in the email? Yeah, if you could just formally send me that. Uh, I'm not going to search through the five pages now to find that particular thing, but you mentioned it here. Ms. Frazier will review and she'll update it for record. Just just one word, just one word. All right. Yeah, okay. I'll send Thank it to you. Thank you. Any other, any other amendments or changes to the meeting minutes? Very good. All right. So we'll bring it to the floor for a vote. I'm going to have to go down the list. So. Uh, Kwame Fraser, yes. Adele Bennett. Ms. Bennett. Hello, what are we voting on? We are voting on the approval of the meeting minutes for January 5th. All right, I approve, yes. Allison Martinez. Yes. Thank you. Hazel Martinez. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Marguerite Viglianti. Yes. All right. Uh, I'm going to speak the names. I'm not sure they're here, but I'm going to run through them. Dr. Carol Renew, Ann Hudson, Rachel Goodfriend, Julia Charles, Mary Gallagher, Joan Erskine, Bree DaCosta. Yes, sir. Yep. Dale Dawes. Yes, here. Vanessa, oh, yes. All right. Vanessa Kwashi. I approve. Thank you. Pearlene Fields. Yes. Mary Bell Downs. She's here. Yolanda Aline. Yes. Julia Key. Therese Rodney. Julia James. Present. You're voting on the. Um, Meeting minutes, Ms. James. Sorry, yes. Thank you. Simone Sylvester, Judy Spence, Lilith Robinson. Yes. Cecile Musham, Tria Deus, Osney Lewis. Yes. Tamara Thomas. Yes, with the noted typo fix. Thank you. And Alexandra. Probably getting to the mic. Alexandra. All right. This will come. There you go. Hi, sorry, I'm here. I just have a lot of background noise. Do you approve the meeting minutes, Alexandra? Yes. Thank you. Daryl Hollins. Yes. I don't have an updated record, but I'm going to call her name Joan Bacardi. Take the record. Hold on. Six, seven, eight, 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 eight. She's here. I see her on the. Six. Uh, so 16, yes. Uh, the motion passes. Meeting minutes have been approved. Um, I see some hands raised. Uh, uh, before I acknowledge the hands being raised, is um, Angela Davis in here? Yeah, I'm trying to get in touch with someone. I didn't see her online. Okay. All right. So, in the interest of moving the meeting forward, we'll just table that for now. 
Um, and we'll move to unfinished business. Mr. Holland, is your hand raised for unfinished business or is it for something else? Oh, no, I meant to take it down. I'm sorry. Sure. I'm sorry. That was a mistake. Does anybody have any unfinished business? Okay. Yes. Remember, I said they were putting up a hotel on our border again. Did you hear anything yeah. about that? I didn't. I drove by it though. Yeah, it's right there. They said something. Yeah. Yeah. When I went to the E Hall the other day, I, I drove by it. I saw it. Mm -hmm. But it's going to affect us because it's from dead there again. But the 14 didn't say anything to you? No, I didn't really uh, hear any notices or anything like that. And honestly, they didn't even speak about it at the housing meeting. That the they might not even know. No, they were talking about some some other topics. Okay. They always say. All right, thank you. Mr. Lewis, unfinished business? Yeah, um, I, I, I was um, recently um, sent an email um, by the folks from McKissick and McKissick um, telling me that the, the packages for the construction of the Shirley Chisholm Recreational Center will start to go out. You're breaking up, Mr. Lewis. sent me a, a email telling me prepare myself for that because I actually went through their pre thin process but what they have not told everyone you still need to be pre-qualified by Len Lease Bovis and that's kind of I believe a kind of um, like in a way a clandestine way of still keeping back the MBEs on You're breaking up, Mr. Lewis. Yeah, I want us to be aware of that because again, we need to be a part of the project in whatever way, shape and form, right? So, you know, in the community, if you know someone who is in the construction field in any capacity, who has a business in particular, because you have to have the employers to be able to hire the employees. These folks have to be aware of what's going on. I think in, I believe it's April, the Commerce Committee is supposed to have a meet and greet for the businesses and so forth. I think it's gonna to start to get advertised in a, in a little while. That might be a way of an introduction to come out because I'm giving the commerce person chair, chair information to reach. We need to, we really need to be on the ball with this because like I said, since last year, when this goes, it's going to go very quickly and we could be left out in the dust if we're not prepared. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Ms. James, I saw your hand raise. Uh, did you put it down? Sorry. That was... All right, Ms. Bennett. Uh, yes, this is for Mr. Lewis. What is the um, date exactly that they gave you for the MBs to come and the con contractors, the black contractors? Because that was a very good idea. But I don't, I don't think you heard anything about it. Because I know a few black contractors. Oh, you're saying you're asking Mr. Lewis when, what, what the date they're informing him to date because that date might not be exact. They give us one date and they already did. So, Mr. Lewis, you have an answer for that? What date did they give for the, the MBEs to have their um, applications acknowledged? And who's going to take these applications? And where can you get it? So the, the thing about the application process is, like, like, was, like was said before, if mm -hmm. you reach out to, and again, 
I I could maybe get the the card. I think the card was given already to the to the board. Mm -hmm. The application in the pre-qualification application, you still need to go through McKissick for them to vet you mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. see if you have the needed qualifications first before you even go and do the pre-qualification with Lendlease. Let me go. Right? Hold on a second. Pre-qualifications. Huh? Did they give you a, a list of the pre-qualifications? There's, 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 there's every, every general contractor have a different thing. Um, it depends on what type of contractor you are. If you are a prime, more than likely that those people who have a GC, who have a specific, um, status, who have done large jobs, who have, um, bonding and insurance. We're talking about maybe, <laughs> hello. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, he keep breaking up, Mr. Lewis. Did you not hear me clearly? I can no, hear you. Better. All right, hold on a second. Can you, can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay, good. So a lot of the folks in the in terms of pre qualification. Mm -hmm. For prime, for primes, they are looking for people that have um, bonding. They have bonding and ins insurance mm -hmm. in excess of five million dollars. Um, aggregate, not aggregate, sorry. Um, umbrella, mm -hmm. five to ten million dollars as a GC, as a general contractor. They're looking for you to have jobs in excess of maybe, let's say, at least. A hundred thousand dollars or a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's some mm -hmm. of the requirements. They're looking to see how many jobs they're gonna actually take references from you for your last three jobs. They want to see the revenue that you made in the last year or the last three years. Every GC is different. These are just some of the basic things I have seen in particular with the MBE requirements with all these different things. As a as a subcontractor, it's a little less stringent because you are actually going to be working for a GC, which has to take on more responsibility. Mm -hmm. All right. So again, these are the discussions that we need to have because again, going through the pre vetting process for myself and what I needed to have, I don't rack up with some of these bigger with some of these bigger folks. So what I would have to do is go in as a sub myself. Well, my question is, how are they going to get the black and the in? How are they going to get these black contractor jobs? Well, the whole thing about it is that this is, and again, this is an ongoing discussion that I have had with Ms. Bouchard's office. And I was actually sitting down with the chief of staff for half an hour this, discussing that there are some, that there are some, there is an impossibility for a lot of the smaller people, smaller trades people, mm -hmm. to get those needed pre-qualifications, that they need to change the rubric of how they actually grade or give opportunities to these folks. They may be changing the opening there. They're going to slam the door in a lot of people's face. That's 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 basically it. So I have been in contact back with their office to find out, and I was told that they understand that this has been some of the 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 the, the problems that has escaped or has caused our community to not be acknowledged based on the fact that we don't readily have those networks that give us that give us those things. Well, the person I know, I'm going to check with him, but I believe he has all that. And if he does, he deserves to get in. Okay, so we'll wait and we'll, um, we have the forum and the avenue to get the information for what's necessary. Thank you, Mr. Lewis, on keeping us surprised of the current MBE situation with land use. Um, we know uh, as the Chisholm Center gets closer, that in all forms we want to be included in that process. Um, I don't believe 
that our presenter is going to be present today. Oh, wow. Not an acknowledgement that uh, they're going to be present. We can't get in contact with anyone from NHS, so that's probably not going to happen, unfortunately. Uh, so do we have any? Yes, Ms. James. Ms. James, your hand is raised. Mm -hmm. My apologies for this. Sorry, I'm out. Sorry, yeah. Um, on the new business or what? I'm sorry, I don't recall new business. There will be. I'm sorry about that. Um, <laughs> outside. Uh, there will be a public hearing on the 15th to discuss rezoning. Uh, it's not about rezoning any particular area. We will not entertain any discussions about any specific um, parcels, areas. But what we are looking for is a community's perspective on whether or not we should move forward with rezoning and see if we can get a consensus on that with regard to um, the issues uh, that the city is facing, that we are facing, how do we deal with it? So again, on the 15th, there will be a public hearing Come, please, but however, please be advised that we are not going to discuss any specific area in terms of whether we are zoning or down zoning any particular site location. It's in a, a general discussion. So thank right. you. Do you have a time for the public hearing? Um, the board meeting starts at seven o'clock. So okay. the board the board matters will take place. Um, there is there is another hearing being held that day. So to accommodate elected officials, we'll start at eight o'clock. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Uh, so we informally moved into new business. So now that we're done with unfinished business, we're in new business. Um, thank you. There were some hands. Uh, do we have any new business? I see Mr. Lewis, your hand is raised. Okay, it has not raised. Go into the chat. I believe that's the name of the project. Yes, Mr. Sorid. This is new business, Mr. Sorid. You wanted to discuss something in regards to. Yes, thank you. To right. Kings Highway, just to quickly say, Kings Highway, it was called Kings Highway Self Storage. Something along the lines of that, but okay. it didn't have an address attached to it. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm not sure if it, I, I dropped the link in the chat. I don't know if that's helpful to. Any of the neighbors who are into the pro that project, but that's the ULERP application that's online. So if people want more information on King's Highway Self Storage, if that's the same one, uh, that's that's what's online. So you could click on that. Um, the, the issue that I wanted to just bring up was the uh, the Kingsborough West. Um, was that talked about at the housing fair, uh, Mr. Chair? Not to my knowledge. Okay, I didn't think so. No, nah, I didn't so, think it was spoken about at all. Yeah. Actually. Okay, so I I just wanted to bring up if, if anybody it's it, it's going to affect CB seventeen, uh, just as much as it affects CB nine because it's on the border, uh, and this Kingsboro, uh, it's it's a huge development project, and I hope that land use and housing, uh, who are the guardians of uh the neighborhood in terms of the issues. I, I hope they uh, either hand out flyers or, or even send, maybe the district office can send out a mailing because there's going to be 388 uh, more units of supportive housing, most of which comes from homeless, seriously mentally ill. It's almost the equivalent of like four new shelters on, on one corner. That's in addition to the existing 364. So you're going to have 752 beds uh, on Albany and uh, Clarkson. Uh, so there's an issue of oversaturation of homeless, uh, and, and there's also an issue of parking. There's there's a, a tremendous amount of um, units. There's 603 units, 603 units, and there's going to be no parking. So a good amount of those units may be uh, they may not have the income to to buy you know to have a car, but at least half of them, maybe of the 603, may uh, really give a, a surge. Where there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, people who have cars, and everybody's going to be fighting for a spot. So I, I, I hope that you know this community board realizes that there's a, a lot of people that live north of Linden Boulevard and south of Clarkson, 
and there should be discussion about it. The problem is, I think, I think people don't know about it from the neighborhood. Otherwise, there would probably be a similar response that you have here. Is is there anybody out, you know, who is listening now, who's around the area north of Linden Boulevard? Uh, Mr. Sword, we've we've discussed this matter in our committee, um, in the past. Um, I know that you're aware that this is more of a community board nine issue, right? Even though we're affected, uh, uh, it's, it's this, right. It's, this it's is an issue that they need to address or initiate that they would need to actually have a precedence on, being that it's a state funded facility, right? Yeah, well, well just to add to it, uh, Mr. Chair, um, yeah. there's there's no ULERP. So, so it, it affects the community board nine. Usually, you're correct. Usually, right. it's it, it's community board nine where it's located that has the uh, the precedence that has the you know the power because they vote on the ULERP. There's no ULERP. There's no say in ULERP. You're you're absolutely right with the state. So, because it's this a state project, there's no ULERP. But what there is is there's CEQA. So, that, so there's a uh, state environmental quality Re uh, review act, and you take a look if there's uh, an environmental impact. So, New York State said. It's good. It's significant enough where they need an environmental impact statement. So it's going to affect the community. That's why they're going for an environmental impact statement. They gave a presentation to us on January 9th. Who's okay. us? Mr. Sorge? Oh, thank you. Oh, good point. Uh, they gave a, they gave a, a presentation to the Brooklyn community board 9 housing committee. Okay. Which I'm part of my understanding is they're going to come to. Uh, um, Brooklyn community board 17 housing community. On February 9th, so that's uh, okay. that's the good news. Yeah, okay. I, I, the good Mr. news is you could confirm that you're going to have these this team oh. at your meeting on the 9th. Oh, just to be clear, it's it's I'm not involved with it. Okay. I'm just a housing committee member, uh, committee board nine who opposes this. Uh, the district manager informed me that she thinks that it may be, and and she could chime in also. I think February 9th may be close to the date uh, on the housing committee. Is that correct? Or? Um, I couldn't give you hold on a second, please. I couldn't confirm because okay. um, when we last spoke, there has been a lot of development on this issue. Okay. okay. Um, so no, no, no. It's, it's, it's no being it's, it's being internally right discussed of how we're going to handle this matter. Mr. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I just wanted to just finish up and just say I'm, I'll, I'll only take 5 more seconds okay. is that there's a, there was a scoping meeting. New York State had a scoping meeting for the state, and your community, the, the community, community board 17 was never informed with a presentation. Scoping. So there was a presentation. They asked people to come out and speak if it affects them. Everybody in community board 17 is is in the dark about it because they never came. They never, you know, uh, uh, gave a presentation as to the specifics. So they lost the right to. To, to understand it and then to, to give comments. The comment period ends <laughs> February 20th around. And it's just people are in the dark about it and and they should have done what they needed to do, which was to inform the community and not keep the community in the dark. And they they you know they won this they won they had the winning bid in July of um 2000 and, uh, uh, 20, 2021. A year and a half they waited purposely and they kept the community in the dark. So all you guys and you know, people don't know, and I guarantee you, because in the environmental statement, there's a whole bunch of schools that are around there. There's eight different schools that are close by. And I, I, I have a feeling that if the parents realize what they're putting there in terms of the homeless stuff with the drug addicts and everything, they may feel just as passionately about what's going on. So I, I've, I'm disappointed that people haven't been more aggressive about it. And, and I hope that um, if, if they don't come here on the 9th, then they're just going to make the uh, they're they're going to make the lawsuit against them that much easier. I mean, it's 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 it, there's there's guidelines where they're supposed to inform a community. And anyhow, uh, I'll be at the ninth. I, I hope people care about it. And if you know anybody who's north of Linden Boulevard, um, you know they they should know because there's going to be displacements. If, if you have, you know, if you, if you have seven six hundred units. And 300 units, 300 of those people could have cars. Um, the parking, there's going to be no place for people to park and they're going to move out of the neighborhood. And the homeless situation, I spoke to a, uh, a community block association in um, Community Board 17, uh, 58th Street and 59th Street. And the, the head of it, she said that she's, she's, she's going to be moving because she can't take the homeless because they're, they're defecating on the lawns. 
So the people who were there, I, I you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I live in Long Island, so I can't have access to the, those people. But when they find out, I think they're going to flip out. Okay. I think you might have some questions, Mr. Sorridge. So would you have the opportunity to, I hope people to, remember, to sure. respond? All right. Alexandra, your hand was raised. I have some new business after Mr. Sorridge, actually. Very good. Mr. Dell, is your comments in regards to what Mr. Sorridge presented? Yes, my question is, why would the state intentionally leave us out? And is okay. there any recourse? Is there recourse for them leaving us out? It's not procedural for them to include us in that process. He said that there's no. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so, so just to, just to answer that, you, you know, th there's 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 something called like community engagement. So there's a 288 page packet. And uh, I'm not going to say too much on this out of respect for for for, for certain people, but uh, I'll tell you, New York State could have done a much better job because because they won it and they could have informed people. And and one of the ways that they won this is when they present their proposal. There's a private developer. The private developer applies to New York State Home, uh, Empire State. I just want to know: Is there a legal recourse? Yeah. 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 So so what you, yeah. So what it is is you challenge. You challenge the uh, the environmental the in, the uh, environmental impact statements, and you basically say, "Look, you were supposed to come in here and inform us." So, because it's a minority neighborhood, there's something called environmental justice, and 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 there's something called a secret book, and in it it says that you're supposed to inform people, and specifically, just to give you specifics, they didn't put this in the city record. So, you're supposed to have something in the city record. They didn't put it in the city record. They didn't put it in a newspaper. Okay, so you could object to the environmental impact statement. The problem is it costs a lot of money. So what you're going to have to, if somebody wants to fight it, they need to have the city's public advocates office do it, or hire, or hire a lawyer. I have my own lawyer. You know, but but they they didn't do what they were supposed to do, and and technically the city public advocate they can get the best law firms that work for free. Mm -hmm. There's law firms in, in Manhattan, they volunteer for the city public advocate's office. So if there's enough people right. in the neighborhood, they could do it. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bennett. Thank you. Chair James, your hand is raised. Yeah, I, I just want to say that I did attend a public hearing on this matter. So a public um, hearing was held with uh, voice their concerns. Thank you. Um, any no new, uh, Alexandra, you had new business. I didn't forget you. Yes, um, I don't know if this is the appropriate forum to bring this up, but you can let me know. As far as land use, um, I know we spend a lot of time talking about incoming buildings, new projects, how money is going to be used going forward. But one of the things I've been thinking about recently is current resources, who is holding landlords or builders or whoever it might be accountable to follow existing guidelines um, and, and rules, essentially. Um, long story short, I just moved into the fourth building where I ordered a rent history report and found out that my landlords were overcharging me by quite a bit. And I wonder how many other rent stabilized units are out there like this um, and what kind of wave that might create if um, rents were corrected, because obviously the bigger picture is that if they illegally raise rent stabilized rents, it affects the whole market. Um, it affects like the whole median area um, rent for one bedroom or what have you. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, you know, what kind of resources could we utilize? Maybe we could call on our local um, elected officials to call for some kind of audit or something like that for rent stabilized units. Um, so, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Um that the, the topic does bleed. It's not quite a land use issue per se. It would lean more towards housing, but the manner that it's being used does kind of bleed into what we do or what we discuss, you know, because it's just a another matter of displacement. So uh, really that's a conversation for the housing committee. Um, the chair is actually here tonight. 
Miss Fields? I don't have a calendar in front of me, that's why I'm asking for you, Miss Fields. Um, sorry, I had stepped away for a second. Yeah. Um, so, can you repeat what you were um saying? She's basically saying that um she has a situation for housing that they um she she asked for a rent history report and she's being overcharged for um or she's not being charged what she's supposed to be charged in a rent stabilized unit. So um I'm directed yeah. towards your um committee. Is that something that you would address there? There would be a housing issue, yes. And um I would discuss with Ms. Frazier because I know there's a um agency that handles that, but I don't remember the name of it off back, you know, from my memory. So I have to look that up. But there is an agency that deals with um being overcharged rent. So we would have to um check into that. Okay. Could you There's inform her of, of your next com, um housing committee date? So she can be Yes. It's going to be um on February 9th, Thursday, next week. And um, I'm mm -hmm. the link is going to be sent out um probably tomorrow. We had to delay because of some issues, but, but um the link is going to be virtual, so the link will be sent out sometime tomorrow. Okay, I'll pop in there. Just to be clear, I know how to handle it for myself. This was more of a question of if there was the possibility of a larger audit, how would that affect our communities and like the existing, you know, median numbers and things like that. But I will um, pop into your meeting, Ms. Fields, and bring that up to the housing committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'm you. Too, so if you would just share um the process and how easy it is to do that i would actually have some interest in that um to actually get the audit you know and have it executed so if you could just keep me apprised um of that that'd be great definitely thank you alexandra uh mr sorry your hand is raised Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to add um somebody mentioned that there was a public meeting it, it is a good point that there was a public meeting the reason why some people may know there's a public meeting. A public meeting in regards to what, Mr. Sword? On the on the Kingsborough situation. Okay. The reason how, uh, why people may know it's a, it's a, there was a public meeting is because I dropped it in the chat the day before yeah. at the uh, general meeting, the Community Board 17. That's how Community Board 17 really advertised it, is when I put it in the chat, and then when you subsequently co uh, copied it and said, here it is again in the chat. The problem isn't that they had a public meeting. The problem is, is that they didn't tell, they didn't come here with a presentation and they didn't tell people ahead of time as far as the community engagement goes. The problem so they is had the process, process, right? They didn't formally yeah. inform us. That's the issue. The, the problem is the process and the problem is, is that Community Board 17 is not being aggressive enough in terms of informing the people. And that I have to come out from Long Island and and and, and put hand out flyers on everybody and, and people don't care about the people in the neighborhood that, that they don't live in. That's the problem. A little fair, Mr. Sorry, to say that we don't care about the people in the neighborhood. Well, well, what's been going? Not, how how have they been informed? I can't speak to how they've been informed because I wasn't. Not, not you, not you, but the housing committee and other people who hear it. If you hear it, have you been going to the speak. housing committee? Have you given the housing chair the information? Has she spread it? Yeah. Or? Okay. I, I I I've I've been going to the housing meeting for four months. Housing meeting uh person is a very nice very nice woman, and I'll leave it at that. But um, I wanted this this issue should have been at the uh the joint meeting, at Kingsborough. That's why I asked you the question. Is that when there's a there was there was a joint meeting just to tell you how 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 furious I am, there was a joint meeting for Community Board Nine and Community Board Seventeen. They didn't bring up this issue, even though that's been the most important issue with Community Board Nine and Community Board Seventeen. On you could have been process. present there, no? I was. I, at the I, I I I I could not have because because there was an issue where it, where we had around uh, nine hundred views and it was held on a Saturday. And I wasn't told when the meeting was. I, I don't want to get into the issue. All right. It, but they I held mean, it. They held it. You to say that your issue wasn't spoken about when you weren't present to actually address it. This oh. isn't the form for that. Typically, I'm not oh. oh. you because it's, I'm being fair and upright. But to challenge that your issue wasn't addressed and you weren't present to address it, or that no one else was informed, you can't speak on everybody else's behalf. You can't. Sure. I, I, I'm speaking on behalf of the East Flatbush community. Okay. It was lo it was located in the west part of the district at Erasmus. It was, issue, yeah, it was at Erasmus High School, but the the fire is going on in East Flatbush. I'm not, Mr. Chair. I, I'm not saying with you because it hasn't been brought up. In fairness to you, it hasn't been at this committee for you. So I'm not. In fairness to you, I can't come to you now and say, Mr. Chair, you haven't done something. So I have I have no issue with you, sir. 
But what I'm saying is there were other places where this was. The reason I didn't attend this is because there was a big issue that, that they held it on, on, the, on the Jewish Sabbath on Saturday. Okay. And, and East Flatbush, I drive, but in East Flatbush, half of the, the community is a combination of it's African-American and there's a lot of uh, Orthodox Jews. Okay. And, I, and we, that, that's the reason why, and I have, I have a whole bunch of people I could bring out to it. So why they have that, that was the problem is, is the okay. timing of it. So, so this is the form for that addressing, right? You would go to the housing committee and address right, but, but it's Right, but it's, but just to tell you, sir, it's a land use issue. And I know. I, and I, and I hope you take it up. Thank you. I'm aware of it. Um, thank you, sir. I'm thank just going to allow the chair to respond. Ms. Fields? Yes, thank you. Um, the reason that it wasn't brought up, Kingsborough and the town hall, was because it was, it was a housing town hall, not a land use um, town hall. So that's why we decided that we were going to discuss on doing that topic at a different date, especially since it, CB17 wasn't um, directly affected. So I'm sorry that you weren't able to um, have the discussions happen. But like um, the other chair said, if you would have been there, you could have brought it up yourself because unfortunately other people brought up land use issues as well. So um, again, you're thinking about doing the Kingsborough um, um, group to come and talk to us, but it hasn't been decided yet, but we will keep you informed to let you know. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bill. And, and just to, if I can add in, just to- You can add. You can add yeah, yeah just, just, just to respond to it. It was a very big issue because what happens was is what's going on in East Flatbush is that there's a tremendous amount of unity where the, where the black community is coming together with the Jewish community on this issue. It's a, it's, it's a tremendous amount. So what happens is is the timing of when they held the, the hearing, they held it on Saturday, which which was uh, something that half of the community couldn't come out to. And I don't have an issue with CB17 because you Mr. know there may Mr. not be that many. let me let me just finish let me let me finish let me no, finish no, my point you've been talking too long I, I, i'd like to finish my enough. point let somebody i'd like, else to, I'd like to finish my point let somebody I, I, have a voice I, 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 hold on can i finish my point hold on hold on hold on can i finish my point can i finish my point i don't want to hear it i'm a person and i have i don't want to be rude but give somebody else all right mr i'm not going to hold on hold on let me finish it I'm, Mr. Sorry, I'm going to need you to wrap it, wrap it up so that we can move on on the topic. So I need you to concisely conclude your thoughts because you have been you have been weaving in and out so other people Fine. can discuss it and we can move on on the matter. All right. I, I'm I, giving I, you the floor now so you can do what you need to do. Please wrap Fine. it up. Fine. So you don't Fine. mind. My, right. my, my issue was there were people who objected to community board nine for community board ju jump, uh, joining community board 17. They said, let community board 17 do it. Let them have their own housing thing but at least let us reserve our right to CB9 having our own housing thing. And I, and in solidarity, I'm not going to go to a joint housing committee, which one part of the group can't go because of religious purposes. Just like if, if it was the opposite way around and if they held it on Sunday so that African-Americans who go to church couldn't go to it, in solidarity, I wouldn't go to it. My issue was not for CB17, it was for CB9. That's my issue. That was, that was my comment. That's why I didn't show up out of solidarity. All right. All right. Thank you for clearing up. Ms. Um, James? Yes, I just want to say that the site which is being discussed is the King's, it's a, it was a psychiatric center, okay? So it, it was a psychiatric center for the past, what, probably 30, 40, 50 years. So what they're doing is just rebuilding it, redeveloping it to add, and also using the, some of the space to add housing. Homeless people need shelter just like anybody else and if that's given the fact that there is a limited state and city land available that's the land that the state has and that's the only land which was big enough to do it the if you think about it all the parking lots of the hotel the hospitals have been taken away to facilitate the construction of housing and so given the fact it is or was a psychiatric center it's in the middle of downstate Kings, uh, Kingsbrook, as well as Kings County, where there is a medical support, it is best located there. Mr. Thank Chairperson. Yes, Ms. Yolanda Sonny. Lee. Yes. I resent the fact that somebody from Long Island is trying to dictate what is going on in our neighborhood. If we are not aware, it's, 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 it's on us because we have to figure out and do things on our own. We don't need somebody from Long Island to come and tell us that we were this and all of that. That's ridiculous. 
I resent that very much. And then he's taking all these opportunities to spew his thing. If you can attend, stay in Long Island, handle your business in Long Island. Thank you, Ms. Um, Ms. Martinez, your hand is raised. Hazel, sorry. Yes, um, good evening. Um, I, 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 um, this individual has been coming to land use for many, to our land use committee meeting for many years to, um, to, to uh, advertise issues that are in board nine. I think that um, it is in board nine and I mean, it's on our border and we do, it will impact us in some, some way, but he cannot use our committee to get his personal issues resolved with board nine. And I think it is unfair. And the fact is though, that we can't always hold events to accommodate every religious group there is. We have to go with what works for the people who live in this community. Thank you, Ms. Martinez. A feverish topic, as always. Um, second wave, is there any new business to be discussed? Allison, I saw you put something up. I don't want to dismiss that. You did put something up regarding the 421. It is, a, it is something that we need to keep our eyes on. I believe she said that uh, our current governor is trying to extend it. I missed it. Missed it. I had it. Uh, I missed it. She said, uh, I'm trying to pull it from memory from 20 to 2023 or something like that or to 2030. In her new budget, she proposes to extend the um, abatement to 2030. All right. So we'll see how that goes. I know we're speaking in coded language. Um, if you're not familiar with what this is in layman's terms, it's an abatement that allows developers to build on property and not have to pay the residual taxes for extended periods, anywhere from 15 to I've heard maybe 25 years. Um, it's what gives them incentives to build. And a lot of times it's the only um, metric that allows them to build with the current cost of construction and rents and make it plausible to actually build units, right? It expired in June. And basically what that does is almost, it's, ex it's expiration is a protection. If they didn't acquire land up until that point, any land that they will require, acquire now would be adjusted to the new tax, um, to the new tax code for that particular property now with no incentive, right? Um, no, stuff are we as taxpayers losing money? Um, for, uh, are we what? I'm sorry. Are we as taxpayers losing that money? Uh, yeah. I mean, um, really, it's a it's a conversation. You have to think about it. If somebody's building a property next door to you, and they're raising the value of your property, and your taxes are being assessed at a higher rate, and they're not paying for 25 years, the burden does fall on somebody, right? That's, that's awesome. Um, it's an invisible bully. Yeah, yeah. It's an invisible bully. It's something that, you know. Invisible? That's, that's a tree falling on you. It's something that they would never say outwardly, is what I'm saying. But Man, we, know, we know the invisible bullies. We know we know what forms they come in. And this is one of them. So um, it, it, maybe yeah. we can put this out. Uh, yeah, she's, uh, I didn't know that there was a, and let the community know across the city that she gave away all money because that's what it is and we're paying for it everyone is paying for it but um it's something that, it's something that we definitely need to pay attention to um thank you i wish i join join the chat uh we'll have uh, a lot of deeper conduct uh, con con conversations there in regards to it um, but definitely needs to stay on your radar. Any news that you get on it. Thank you, Allison, for sharing that. I got to, hopefully I don't lose it. I'm trying to save it now. Um, I want to make sure that that's that eyes are kept on that because it is. Um, an action that directly affects what we do here. Right? It, it is in its expiration, helping us not to. Have any more rapid development and it kind of. The timing of the expiration kind of speaks to why we had so much rapid development in a concentrated period. 
because of when the properties were acquired and when they were required to actually start building on them to qualify for the abatement before the expiration, right? Um, that information, I, to be honest, I wasn't really, I was aware it was, it was expired, but I didn't know exactly when. But when you look at the time frame and what happened in that three year time period, you could see why it happened so rapidly. It speaks to that. Um, any other new business? Mr. Holland? Yeah, um, it's not really new business. And I meant to raise my hand before, but I wanted to make a comment on what, what Mr. Lewis was talking about McKissick and the contract that might be helpful to him. I could hold it off to the next meeting if, it, if that's more appropriate, because I know it's going to come up again. Um, yeah, maybe we should uh, hold it off. Okay. Because I don't think so, he's present, so. Okay, so um, we'll hold it off to the next to... meeting. Okay, right. that's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. At this time, hearing no new business, um, can somebody motion for an adjournment? My bell, man. Oh, I have something. Oh, sorry. Mr. Davis. Can I go? Yes, yes. How right, is everyone doing? Good night, good night. Um, good I just wanted to, I had spoken with Ms. James about. You're breaking up, Mr. Davis. Like this committee, committee doesn't have a problem with quorum. So, and I know how land use and rezoning kind of intersect in a way. So I don't, I was wondering if they have any problems with um, if they need people, if I can transfer over to that one, if that will be an issue or something to discuss. Because so I you know, know that, what's you up? Your issues are more aligned with the rezoning committee and you want to go there. Is that what you're saying? Yes. If, if, if they don't have any problems, like kind of establishing a quorum or, or if they need people, because this committee doesn't really, it seems like every, you know, we're able to get things done. So it's just kind of helping to get things going. In a way, because I know the rezoning is still kind of, is new or is um, kind it's, of being... it's not quite new. The issue has been going on for a while, but the committee that's specifically addressing that issue is about 2 years old. So, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't see an issue. Mr. Thomas, I mean, Mr. Davis, uh, you want to, you want to give uh, your attention to where your, you know. To where your focuses are, I don't really foresee that being an issue, you know. Awesome. Do you know when they do Sorry. you know when they meet by any chance? Because I'm not. Um or is that on uh, the website? It's probably on the website, but you got my email inside of the chat. If you were in here at some point, I dropped it in a few times or my phone number. Okay. If you could just text me or are you in the um the chat in any the website? No, no, no. Yeah. So just grab my number before the meeting ends and I'll get you um in contact with either the chairperson or I'll get you the application that you would need to fill out to be notified about those meetings. All right, no problem. All right. Thank and you. I sec I second the motion to join <laughs> the meeting because someone had already started the first one. Well, I don't know who acknowledged the first one, so I have to start it over. Oh, all right. All right. Uh, do we have a Excuse me? I I motion for the adjournment, Adele Bennett. Thank you. Do we have a second? Right here. I second the motion. Thank you, Mr. Davis. The meeting, I mean, the motion is moved and properly sent. Who is second? The Mr. name? Timothy Davis. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everyone. Um, good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Have a good evening. Good night. The process. Good night. The process. Look out for any much. and any information, and feel free to reach out to me to discuss anything if you need some understanding or anything isn't clear. All right. Okay. Looking forward to that pamphlet, the application as a packet, along with the process that I verbalized today. Are we right. going to get copies? You're going to get a copy. You're going to send it out. Mr. Chairperson, I'm on the phone, so I can't see your email or your, your telephone number. Would you like me to say it? If you want to say it. I'll so send it to her, Chairperson. Her. You'll send it to her? Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep, and don't forget the quality of life. Uh, just saying that in the exit, I'll be the echo. Quality of life issues 
Okay. From ponding to zoning to darkened streets to potholes, whatever you got, so that we could coordinate that walkthrough properly. Uh, okay. Office. Okay. All right. Okay. We're trying our best to correct it. That's why we have this conversation now in regards of making sure, like, vendors like this and are 